through the shades of entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. has a long list of achievements in business over the past 30 years and has empowered people around the world to thrive in entrepreneurship, health, wealth, and personal development. Please welcome the co-founder of Ryu Project, Lonnie Dizen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm, I'm really interested about this call because this entrepreneur is actually calling in from Japan. And what time is it over right now? It's one in the morning. It is one in the morning. So today we have a Rio coin, Lani Dazone. I'm really excited about this one. Uh, this is a crypto. So folks uh, that know me know I do dabble in the crypto. But I, again, I feel it's something I'm, I, have, I have no clue what's going on. But first, before we get on to that, why don't you give us an introduction? Yeah, sure. So um, I would say I'm pretty much a self-made entrepreneur. Uh, I'm one child out of four. Um, I was a Navy brat. Uh, my father, he was uh, in the military, always normally at sea you know, at, when he was in the Navy. My mother, uh, sh she had the role of both father and mother because uh, he was always away. Um, unfortunately, at a very young age, because my father was exposed to a lot of the chemicals in the military. Uh, he died of cancer at the age of 43. So that was extremely devastating uh, for me and my family, um, made a profound impact on me because I was only 12 years old. Um, my family was not prepared um, and I had to grow up very, very quick. I had to be very independent. And at that time, um, you know, I thought that I wanted to become a doctor. I wanted to be in medicine because I wanted to help people. And uh, so I got into nursing and then I wanted to become a medical doctor, but then Destiny actually took me to a totally different path. Um, my mom, while I was going to school and, and working full time, uh, she introduced me to this opportunity. I, she tried to for three months and I kept denying it, didn't want to attend. and. Then later she said, you know, you really just have to go. And, and I wound up going because I was curious, what is my mom getting into here? So um, I didn't like sales. This opportunity was about sales. And uh, what changed me though, is what the speaker had said that day. Um, and just looking around the room and noticing that there was nurses, there was doctors, there was professionals and lawyers. And I said, you know, here I am going to school to become a doctor. Why are all these professionals here? And what am I missing? So I listened to him and he basically was talking about becoming an entrepreneur, um, learning how to build your own business and what it entailed. And uh, I got really intrigued. And although I was in nursing, going to become a doctor, um, I dove into it and I said, you know what, maybe I should give this a try. And so I did. And I was very shocked at the success that I was getting at such a short amount of time. Um, I, my first year, I built an organization of over 120,000 people, um, customers, uh, and other entrepreneurs. And that was in really incredible back then because that was pre-internet. I did it all on pagers <laughs> and fax machines. So that was, it was very incredible, especially the fact that I was 19 years old and I was extremely shy. So, um, you know, I was, I was very, I was very shocked that somebody like me could become successful. And so when I made it, and of course I had a lot of challenges along the way, but when I was surprised that I made it, I, that's when I dedicated my life to doing this. And I, I went from wanting to be in medicine 
to shifting into natural alternatives, uh, natural nutrition. Um, then after I was exposed to these different companies and, and gained some success, I decided, why don't I go ahead and try to make my own product line? So I started working with developers and scientists, and I was very passionate about creating products that did what they, we say that we're going to do, you know, what, what they're supposed to do. And, uh, and I was interested in helping people be motivated and, and have personal development and life enhancement. And so I started all of this in the USA and then it all of a sudden naturally traveled to Japan. And then from Japan, it went to Indonesia and Hong Kong and Thailand and Singapore. Um, and I was really focused on, uh, of course, all eight women, men of all ages, but I really focused on women's groups, women's organizations, and also the younger generation. Um, and so for the past 30 years, uh, my experience as an entrepreneur had helped me to learn more about business consulting and global marketing and branding and building corporate networks, product development, um, and all of these things. So I believe in entrepreneurship. I think it's, it's so wonderful because it helps you branch out into so many different things. Um, and although personal development and health are, are my passions and always will be, I heard about Bitcoin in 2011 and I remember trying to get a wallet so complicated. And when I looked into it, I said, you know what, Th there's a lot of opportunity here, but I also saw a lot of challenges. Um, cryptocurrency is very difficult for the average person to, to understand, uh, very complicated, very, very foreign. And so, but, but I also understood that for the future, it's going to create a lot of new opportunities, just like the internet 25 to 30 years ago. And so with my desire to make a greater impact on the global scale um, beyond health and wellness, that's what led me to my path today. My goodness. And now I'm, I'm the founder of Zenza Capital, uh, which is now working on this tremendously uh, great real project. <laughs> I love it. You know, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, you that was phenomenal a phenomenal kind of a summary of, of your background and i'm going to kind of try to un, unpack it all so first let's start at the beginning you know, one okay. of the things you mentioned uh you talked about um really being shy uh and, and go, jumping into a sales role what yes. what did you do what kind of tactics or what kind of advice would you give folks to kind of come how, how did you get out of your shell to become a lead sales agent well it all started with you know, me not liking sales at all. And <laughs> <laughs> I never thought that I could get into sales. In fact, the one thing that made me successful is that is when I shifted away from thinking it was sales. And then I started sharing. And that's what I was taught by uh, my mentor back then, who actually became uh, my business partner. And actually, we're still working together after 30 years. But what he taught me was focus on the, the people, don't focus on the money. And when you have genuine intentions, that is one get, what's going to help you through. And the better you help people, the more you help people, that's just a report card. The amount of money you make is just a report card of how well you help people. And so I broke out of my shyness by, number one, believing in the product that I was going to sell. And when I believed in the product, it's, it's almost like just sharing a great movie that you liked or a great uh, restaurant that you liked. And so when I started doing that and started sharing the products that I was promoting, I took my focus off of the money on off of my shyness. And I put my focus on my belief and help truly helping people. And that was really incredible because, um, you know, I, I thought that I was going to be helping people in the medical field, but now helping people with health, even before they got ill, was really a just beyond what I imagined. 
And you know, one of the things you also mentioned is, is you found yourself uh, at, at this conference with an individual speaking about entrepreneurship to a bunch of businesses. One, yes. uh, tell us a little bit more about that and what led you to that? Well, what led me to it was my mother because uh, I, w- I was going to nursing school and I was going to school full time and, uh, and work, work full time. And she invited me to go to this, this meeting. And when I went there, um, again, I was very negative about it. I thought, who are these people taking my mom's money? And that was the only reason why I went. Uh, and so that's, that w- that's what really what led me there. Um, I didn't expect to be there. I never expected to be out of the medical field. I thought that was my future. I was going to be a medical doctor. Um, in fact, all the things that I have accomplished in my career over the past 30 years, I would have never imagined that I could accomplish what I did. And it, I, I owe it all to becoming an entrepreneur, you know, at the young age of 19. You know, now well, let's talk about that transition. So you're, you're at 19, you're, you're starting to do sales and then you start transitioning again. Talk about that pivot in your, in your career. So when I was sharing these products and, and taking the products myself, I really, believed in in the whole opportunity entrepreneurship and the products however there were some issues not issues but i i always saw that the products could be better or other things could be better and i thought you know i'm i'm learning to be an entrepreneur i'm learning how to build a business what happens if i stick take it a step further and then that's when i started contacting scientists and formulators and finding out, okay, if I were to create my own product, what would I, what would I create? And I started asking the science sci- scientists and formulators, if I were to make a product so great that you would put your name on it, what would you, what would you want? And so I started focusing really on results rather than profits it was about creating products that people want to take, love to take, and can take for a lifetime for the entire family. So that's how I started off. Is that's what I was looking for at the with the product side, and then I had to build a team. So learning first, I had to have the vision, and I had to have the products, and then I had to build the team, and then I knew a little bit more about marketing, so I brought that in. And then it was all about sharing it and just starting the company and just growing one customer at a time, one entrepreneur at a time. And yeah, that's how I got my results. You, just you, keeping my focus on the task. I love it. And, you know, I, I would love to dig into that a little bit more as well. You know, you're, you're talking about product development, right? And finding the right product yeah. market fit to build your team. Talk about your experience going through the product development. What did you do to, uh, you, you mentioned you reached out to a network, a bunch of networking. Uh, what, what else did you do to kind of, you know, think about like the stage gates of a product development? What all do you have, do you think about when you do, do a product development? Well, when you do product development, you have to consider the cost. Uh, you have to consider the timelines. You also have to consider uh, when you're making a product for your own, there's the amount of products that you have to make. So for example, one of my products uh, is a antioxidant beverage. And I've had this product over the years, it's probably been 20 years since I've had this product. uh, product. Um, And my goal was to make it multifunction. Multifunction because there's so many products out there. You don't know what to take and a lot of it like, doesn't doesn't taste good or um uh it's very complicated so like even skincare for example you've got dry skin and oily skin and combination skin and and so what i try to do is create a create products very slim product line but that has many products all in one so a lot of my customers will show me I used to take all of these products and they, they'll show me like 20 bottles of products and then they'll say, now I only take your one product. And so it's about multifunction. It's about the cost. 
making sure that it's cost friendly for the consumer, making sure that it, it tastes good or, you know, people would want to take it for uh, and share it with others and uh, global wise. Oh, and also because I ship these product products all over the world, they have to be stable for mm. all different kinds of environments. So that's what you look for, for uh, product development. You know, that that's a great point. And I think that some people might forget about is, you know, the wear and tear that these products go through uh, yeah. when you're shipping, you know, overseas. Now talk about, you, you mentioned, you know, once you got your team going, you started marketing, but specifically you talked about global marketing. So can you yeah. tell us a little bit more about what your experience is in the global marketing world and how does that kind of differ from just, you know, social media outreach? Well, okay. So for, for global marketing, it would, actually became very natural for me. And I think the reason why is because I naturally expanded my business to Japan. And to be honest, I, I've been here for 30 years, over 30 years. I don't speak Japanese, which is very, very difficult to run a business in this country. It's probably I would say it is the most difficult country uh, to, to have a business in or to to deal with because there's so much strictness and regulations and it's a very homogenous uh, society. But with the global marketing, once the reason why I was so interested in Japan is because it because it is strict and because it is uh, respected all over the world because of quality. I knew that if I could make it here in Japan, then I could make it anywhere else. And so when my products were very, very well embraced here uh, and, and people started hearing about it in Indonesia and Hong Kong and Thailand and uh, just the Philippines and all over Asia, Vietnam, they, con they were contacting our company just naturally saying, wow, we really want to try your products. And so that's when we started branching out into these other other countries. You know, that's that's interesting. I would love to kind of hear some of your, your strategies, like, you know, tired and true strategies that you use to globally scale your business. Well, I, I would say that it has to do with a great team. And, um, you know, having a great team that really believes in the vision and that are dedicated just as much as I am, uh, that that share the, the the vision. So that's I, I would say that would be probably the number one thing. And also just understanding also when you when you're building a business, you have to always remember. Well, what what I've done is I've taught I've taught a lot of entrepreneurs how to what to focus on, like on a daily basis, how to stay focused. And so I kind of broke it down to, to them in a very simple A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> and G, starting with having a goal. You absolutely have to have a goal. And F, then this is moving backwards. So yeah. G is the goal. F is having focus. Um, e is you have, you have a business, so you have to expose that business. And then D would be, you have to duplicate yourself. So you have to have a great team that you duplicate yourself, you know, with that, that has the same vision as you. And then C is you have to have tremendous commitment uh, that no matter what you have a do or die attitude. And then B is you have to have belief in yourself, belief in your company, belief in your product, uh, belief in what you're doing. And then A is you have to have consistent action in what you do. So that is what I always um, remember every day. That's what I follow. But on top of that, I've always taught my team. And I think that the reason why I've done so well is because I'm out there with my team all the time. You'll never see me in an office, you know, just uh, behind the scenes. I'm always out there with my customers. Uh, traveling, meeting them, shaking hands. I love to hear the testimonials that they have. And I'm always there with my team. So I'm there hand in hand, showing them, um, taking them step by step. And so 
I've always created a culture of like a family like culture. So I have people that have worked for me um, up to 25 years, 28 years, just from all over the world that that have stuck by my side because um, because it's it's beyond just a job, but it's actually believing in something. Yeah, you know, and I, I think I'm sure with 30 years, you know, of experience doing this, uh, you've had some setbacks, right? How do you turn some of these short term setbacks into long term triumphs? Well, setbacks are always going to come. And what I've learned is after falling on my face so many times, you know, because I've, I've gone through a lot and it's it's very difficult uh, starting a company and and being a woman or being in the corporate world and being a woman. There are, you know, a lot of disadvantages, um, but it's all in the way you turn it into, you know, an advantage and not looking at it, at it as a disadvantage. So that is that is what I would say is, you know, you have to always understand that you're going to go through challenges, but how fast are you going to get up? How fast are you going to recover and focus on the solution? So whenever there's a challenge involved, what I always do is I look at the solution at the end. And when I look at the solution, I work backwards and I have my focus set on that solution. So one of my, um, one of my slogans is life with no limits. And the reason why is because, you know, when we're young, right? We think that we're invincible. We think that we can do anything. And then as we're getting older, we kind of get beat down because we're told, no, you can't do this. You can't do that. Or, you know, you just go through a lot of negative experiences in your life and that kind of shapes you. And you kind of, that's when you kind of got keep our, our kind of packaged into this box thinking, oh my, you got, you package yourself in all these limitations. And so what I've learned to do is realize when I'm putting myself, when I'm creating a limitation around me and I break out of that. And that's what I've helped a lot of people do is, is kind of break the barriers to limitations and, and remember that, you know, there's always going to be challenges. You always have to focus on a solution. You have to always focus on the end result. So it's like being in a race when you're in a marathon, Okay, you you're always focused on that finish line and you always try to get away from distractions as much as you can and you focus on that finish line. And that's how I oh, that's my mentality now is I I always focus on the goal in the end. And that's what I teach my teams to do. And I think that that is what's really helped me and my teams because we're always focused on proact proactivity and positivity. Focus on that A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I, I really like that thing. I, it was really good working backwards too. Thank it's you. really clever. And so let's talk about growing your network past the million dollar mark. How do how do individuals do that? How do you encourage entrepreneurs to do that? Because I'm all about generational wealth, so I'm also interested. How do we do it? In the end, uh, money to me, it doesn't mean much of anything anymore. It's just, you know, the, the more money you make, the more challenges you can have if you don't have the right mindset. And so, you know, I just, what I do is I just focus on my task. I just focus on on trying to um, do more uh, for, the, for society, for people, for the world. And that's what I put my focus on. And I think that that's, that's, that's why I'm blessed because I feel like the more, the more you you have genuine intentions and you you put yourself out there and not expect anything in return and in helping people the more blessings you get back and so that's really how i do it i mean I, it's really not much more than that yeah and i think you know one thing i always constantly tell folks is it's about habits right creating habits to continue to be successful what would you say are three habits that had led you to your financial success I would say as far as habits are concerned, always just like you have to exercise your body and you have to uh, feed your, your, your health, you know, your health, you have to exercise your mind. So mindset to me uh, is the most important thing because 
if you have the right mindset, no matter what challenges you go through, your mindset will get you through absolutely anything. Um, and then number two is I try to avoid negativity because uh, think about it like in during COVID, right? They said that it's, it's the most dangerous virus in the world, but to me, negativity is the most fire most negative and, and and dangerous virus in the world because you could be on the other side of the world speaking to somebody and your attitude can actually affect somebody else without even being right next to them you could just you know affects how somebody feels so negativity and it, and you know to, to, for example uh, a lot of people or most people if they look at their bank account and they see that it's negative, what is the first thing that they, they're going to do? They're going to panic and they're say, oh my gosh, I got I to gotta make my bank account positive, right? But in reality, what most of us do day to day because of the challenges that we go through and that we face is we don't do that same thing with our mind. We could be negative, hold that negativity constantly uh, for long periods of time, but how much more our minds, you know, that that we should we should shift to positive than than our own bank accounts. So that would be the second, and then third is just um, trying to have some kind of balance because when I was when I was younger. Um, I was a workaholic. I mean, I would just work, work, work and not take time for myself. And so I learned to have a little bit more balance through my, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any kids. So, um, you know, my, my, my dog is my son. And so he helps me. So I try to take walks with him and just break away and just try to be one with the world one with <laughs> the earth uh and so that is what makes me happy you know when when i kind of try to have a little bit more balance i still am am a workaholic uh but you know i try <laughs> yeah i definitely try as well you know and i think you're right in regards i really like your statement uh, the the bad energy right to kind of exclude bad energy in your life. And I think that's so important. Yeah. You know, Nick Saban, uh, the former Alabama coach, college football, he talks about that too. How you, you know, every day you wake up, you have an opportunity to change somebody else's day, either for good yeah. or bad, just by your reactions and your, your interactions with that one person. So for example, yes. if you go to Starbucks and then you're kind of an asshole to that barista, they're probably gonna have a bad day yeah. the rest of the day. Right. Exactly. Uh, but if you go in there with a smile and you thank them and you tip them and you're like, hey, I appreciate it. Even though you spelt my name wrong, this coffee's amazing. Right. They're Absolutely. Gonna be, you know? and, and, you know, there's a lot of times when when you meet somebody and they have a pretty bad attitude. But then if you just sprinkle some kindness, you know, on that person and you let them know, you know, are you having a bad day or are you OK? And, and then they automatically shift you know, it's a positive because what do you have to lose? You got 50, 50 chance of, you know, tr helping them shift. And, and so, yeah, I think that it, especially around the world, you know, a lot of disconnect that we're having around the world, we, it's needed nowadays. Yeah, it's very much needed. And, and you know, I, it's a, just that statement too, you know, that I think there's that, that quote that we're the average of the 10 people we hang out with the most and so if you're finding yourself in a rut pretty consistently, look around the people that you're with. And if, if those yeah. people aren't trying to continue to push you up to succeed and be a better person every day, you might want to look for some other people. I'm not saying that you're, you're, you have to you know, disassociate yourself with your best friends. Not at all. I'm just saying yeah. get out there and network because there is a group of people that want to see you succeed in whatever you exactly. do. Uh, you know, and one of the things you talked about as well was um, we're always asked to stop doing some things, right? As, as we're younger, like for example, I was a, at yeah. a, out a meeting last night, at this award show talking about how it's frustrating sometimes when, when kids are asked to, Hey, stop goofing around, stop drawing, start tinkering. I'm like, no, continue to do it. Cause that's how innovation yes. occurs, right? Your exactly. imagination, let it run wild. I want to see all the crazy fancy ideas that you guys come up with. In fact, 
I want to talk about one crazy fancy idea. Let's talk about Rio coin. How in the heck do you make a digital currency? Let's talk about it. Okay. Well, when I first, when I was first introduced to Bitcoin, you know, like I mentioned, it was extremely difficult. And so, um, I said, we need to have me and my partner, you know, and our teams, we said, we need to create a coin that is simple and is usable. And how do we do that? Well, nowadays, even down to Bitcoin, yeah, you could buy some things with Bitcoin, but quite honestly, nobody wants to use their Bitcoin right now to purchase anything, you know, because, because of the shift in, in, you know, the rise in the value. Um, and, but there's no other real way for day-to-day -day use that it could be, that it could be used. And so what we did is we created this ecosystem and in this ecosystem, we created the most simple digital wallet that can be used by anybody. And this digital wallet um, doesn't have the long, you know, um, wallet IDs like normal. It's it's almost like Venmo, you know, where you can chat with somebody in the wallet and then you could say, hey, happy birthday. And in a few simple steps, you send them Rio and as well as other cryptos like Bitcoin and Ethereum in the wallet. Um, then on, with that digital wallet, we also created a global mall. This e-commerce global mall allows, it, it unites merchants and customers together that, it, that accept Rio as payment. Um, and so that was really important because there is no uh, certain one location where you can actually just, you know, use cryptocurrency to buy. Um, and then on top of that, here in Japan, uh, there's no crypto ATMs. But outside of Japan, there's over, what, 60,000 crypto ATMs just in America alone. So there's no ATMs here. So we were able to fortify this ecosystem with a crypto ATM network, the first license ever created, uh, ever given in Japan. So what does that do is you have a, a, a simple wallet, a simple e-commerce system and a crypto ATM network all comprising of uh, very familiar platforms that people already understand and know how to use. And then that will allow people to go to the ATM. They could buy crypto, buy Rio, Bitcoin, or Ethereum in the, in, in the crypto ATM. And then it goes to their wallet. And then from their wallet, they can go to the global mall and shop. And so with the global mall merchants that we're, we're going to be having here in Japan, they're all waiting for this to launch. Um, we have, we don't just onboard high ticket items, like a lot of the, um, the other cryptocurrencies, so a lot of the, the items that are sold are high ticket items like a Ferrari, for example. What we do is we are going down to the day-to-day -day merchants that, that sell fruits and vegetables and shoes and you know other things and so um you know it, again it's it, everything that we're doing has never been done before um and that's what we feel that we're going to make a tremendous impact our goal is to make it simple easy to use because that is what's going to help with global adoption um just like the internet 30 years ago where the internet was too difficult to understand. It wasn't until Hotmail came along that had it, made it very simple. It wasn't until Facebook came along that made it, you know, people wanted to get on Facebook and even down to the older generation were get, are getting on Facebook, right? So now everybody around the world is 
on the internet and we can't live without it. So now this next generation um, version of the internet is, is coming along with all this new technology from cryptocurrency to blockchain. And so we also have the first layer one blockchain that is that we've created that's coming out of Japan as well. So it's a it's a tremendous project. It was very, very difficult. We've been building this over the past seven years. And um, the reason another reason why we, we know that this is the right timing is even since Bitcoin has been around, it's almost been 15 years. Still to this day, it's not usable on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't go and buy a coffee. You can't go and buy a hot dog with it. And so it's it was it's very needed um, to, to bring it to the masses. And, and also one other thing is cryptocurrencies now like Bitcoin was supposed to be used peer-to-peer. -peer. It was used to be supposed to be a digital currency, but it's not really being used as a digital currency. Bitcoin is now more of a digital gold. And so that's the reason why we're, we needed to, there's a need for Rio. There's a need for an ecosystem to bring it to the average people. And our goal is we don't want people to be talking about technology, right? Because do we think about the back end technology of Visa or how PayPal works or Venmo works? No, we don't. We just want the convenience to be able to, use that payment system but for some reason with cryptocurrency it's just become so complicated and everybody's talking about the, all the different technologies and and so we don't want our people to do that we want people to be able to just use it on a day-to-day -day basis and one thing that's different um with with what we've done here in japan is we have created educational seminars over the past six years we've traveled all across japan and we've taught people about the coming of cryptocurrency uh actually from even seven years ago we taught people about the benefits of cryptocurrency and blockchain and and what it's going to do for the world and the limitless opportunities that that it's going to create and so we don't have just tech people we have um, the younger generation, we have the middle generation, and we have the older generation that are coming to these seminars, which is amazing because this is not happening anywhere else. And the, the older generation are so interested in this because they saw the internet boom. And so they want to see, wow, what is next, you know, for, for my kids and for, for the, my, my grandchildren. So yeah, that's, that's our goal is mass usability. I love it. You know, it's kind of funny. You mentioned a hot mill and I'm sure a lot of people listening probably started thinking of their old AOA or AOL little uh, AOL, usernames. Oh mail. man. It tell, <laughs> I'm telling you, we're dating ourselves now folks, but you know, I, you know, I really do think that there is a need for diversification in the financial structure. And I think, you know, cryptocurrency does give you that, uh, there is, it is a volatile, you know, market. So folks, um, I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not telling you to invest in crypto, but uh, I would encourage you to continue to educate yourself in different financial regions. Uh, it's always good to diversify your portfolio, whether that's a CD or or IRA or you know 401k or whatever it is, whatever avenues you have, including crypto or even just a general savings account or cash under your bed, right? Uh, the end of the goal is to create generational wealth, right? And this is these are just avenues that you can use to help yourself build that generational wealth. Now, where do you see Rio? You know, let's let's look five years down the line. Where where are we at five years? Well, I see Rio definitely global because right now we're we've been building this infrastructure this ecosystem in japan and uh you know atms are so nor so widely used here in japan they're in post offices they're in every single convenience store and there's a convenience store almost on every single block for 7-elevens on almost every block um and so we feel that it's going to be used at the ATMs with the with the wallet with the global mall and we're going to ex be expanding that so we're we're creating trust um, here in Japan and our goal is to expand right away into all into other countries so 5 years down the road I do see it used for 
uh, purchasing even the smaller items, even down to a coffee uh, globally. Yeah, that's gonna. That's I'm. I'm excited for you guys to see it uh, because I think again, folks. I think I truly do believe cryptocurrency has a place in this world, and uh, and it's still finding its world. It's still in infancy. You know, it really yeah. is. It's only been around for like you mentioned, 15, 20 years. Uh, yes. So you know, I'm older than crypto, and maybe <laughs> most of the folks listening are probably older than crypto as well. Now, with that said, what are what is some advice you know for some up and coming uh, entrepreneurs? What would it, what advice would you give them for those that are just starting out? I would say that you have to you know again like with the A B C D E F, you just have to um, you know have your goal. You have to focus. You have to um, educate yourself and expose your business. Duplicate yourself. Uh, be committed have that belief, um, take that action. And you have to always remember, what I would always do is I would remember when I'm, when I'm creating the new business, why am I doing this? Why am I creating this business? Because that why, if you're so passionate about that why, no matter what challenges you're gonna go through, that why is gonna help you always remember and stay grounded um, as to, you know, just stay grounded and, and, and focused on, on the task. So that's, that's what I would say is um, just, and be genuine, be genuine in, you know, with, with what you're doing and with uh, whatever product that you have and uh, just have fun at it too. And uh, if you ever have any fears or you have any doubts, um, again, like I mentioned before, just have the right mindset, you know, always uh, try to stay positive, st try to stay proactive. And that's, that's pretty much, um, I could, there's a lot of things, but the mindset to me is the most important thing. Yep, I, I completely agree. And one of the things you mentioned earlier in this episode as well is is the importance of like focusing on the consumer and what's valuable to them because that is what's going to drive your profits. Exactly. Um, you know, I'm in the healthcare world, folks, as well, and so the way I look at it, if we do right by our patients, we're going it's going to do yeah. our bottom line will improve, right? Uh, just, exactly. just simply by doing great quality of care. Uh, exactly. But it and, and it goes and it goes a long way. You know, and networking goes a long way. Building up these relationships goes a long way. Like I mentioned, we're the average of the 10 people we hang out the most. So uh, find some great people to associate with because, again, there is a cohort of individuals that want to see you succeed. They truly do. Exactly. Yes, it's 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 all over, all about being around like-minded people. And that, that I think, uh, helped me tremendously, too, because at a very young age, a lot of times I... I felt I didn't belong, you know, in high school or even in college. I felt, you know, I, I felt I was different. Um, but when I started getting becoming an entrepreneur and I was around like minded people that, you know, had the goals and wanted to achieve the same similar things as me, then it helped all of us to stay grounded. And, you know, I have to say that when I was uh, when I was in high school, I wasn't sure, you know, what path I was going to take. I knew that I was going to be in medicine, but I didn't know what university to go to uh, or uh, I just needed some guidance. So I was told, go see your high school counselor. And when I went to see my counselor, I met her for five minutes. And why did I still don't know to this day, but uh, I asked her for guidance and she said, well, dear, all I have to tell you is why don't you just go to a junior college because you're not going to amount to anything anyway. And she told me that, and I don't know why she said that to me. And I, it makes me think how many other kids are told this, you know, th that are suppressed and um, told that you just can't, you can't do it. You can't make it. And so um, that's why I'm really focused too on the younger generation and future generations because they are our future. And so um, we need to teach them. Uh, and I, I believe in them ha becoming entrepreneurs. I mean, it's, it's to me the greatest profession. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, I will admit I had the same experience in high school where my counselor kind of said, you know, don't take these certain math classes because you're not going to go to college. And to be honest, I was like, you know what? I think you're probably right. Uh, and, 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 you know, what the sad part about it is sometimes it takes somebody else to believe in you before you to believe yeah. in yourself. And so shout out to yeah. Kim Bass. You know, I think I give her a shot every once in a while. Former director, she's the one that kind of whipped my ass into shape and really had me go back to school. And because of that, I went to Portland State. I went to Syracuse. I, you know, I got my master's degree. I'm, I'm here interviewing some phenomenal people, giving you guys some great education about entrepreneurship, all because somebody else believed in me more than I believed in myself, right? And and, then, and that's that's what I say about my partner is because my partner of of thirty years. You know, I've I've gone through um, a lot of ups and downs, but even me being a woman too, he's really supported me um, and and been there for me and was my mentor and really, um, you know, just uh, taught me the basics of uh, just the, the fundamentals, not just of business, but of how to be your character, your attitude, being genuine, and so. I, I would say that uh, helps anybody, no matter what, no matter who you are, what you do, uh, what business you create. If if you have those fundamentals, then it'll help you along the way. Yes, I completely agree. And folks, you probably hear me say this often as well. I've never failed a day in my life. I either learn or I succeed. That's 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 how we go. I mean, you got to dust yourself off and keep going. Entrepreneurship is not easy. Uh, sometimes it's it's sad. Sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes you you cry a little bit. I've done that a few times in this basement. But man, you keep going. You keep going, right? Yes. Now, is there any definitely. last words you want to say before we leave? Um, I just want to say that uh, in the next few years, I or in the next couple of years, I hope that I could expand Rio Coin um, outside of Japan and to the world. I I expect that actually by the end of this year, we'll start getting traction outside of Japan. So um, if you want to hear more or find out more, please go to riocoin.com. Perfect. And again, folks, this is a great time to shamelessly plug the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter where this information will be available the week before the episode airs, the week the episode airs, and the week after the episode airs. So please visit theshadesofe.com to subscribe to that. You can also follow us on the social channels. This episode will be on YouTube. Uh, so you can also see reels on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and you can follow us our business page on LinkedIn if you feel so need, or you can follow me, connect with me personally. Personally, Mr. Gabriel Flores on LinkedIn. I'm always looking forward to connecting, networking with folks. Lanny, thank you so much. This was a really, really good conversation. Oh, um, I'm really excited. My my digital wallet is waiting for some real coin <laughs> myself. So please do let me know when it when definitely. it does come up, when it comes available, and I'll, I'll definitely get some. I will. And thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Now, again, get some sleep. It's two in the morning over there in Japan. I will. All right, folks, everybody else, thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.